How about Prime Hydration? The largest sponsorship deal in WWE history. How about Cody Rhodes slapping the rock? How about this YouTube channel blowing up? Quarter of a million views in the last two weeks. And to everybody that is uh, tuning in who hasn't subscribed yet, we have a lot of new subscribers, and I'm assuming that most of those new subscribers are wrestling fans because the last two weeks, wrestling has dominated this show. That's not always the case here on the Danny Picard Show, but the last two weeks, wrestling has dominated the content. It is WrestleMania season. It is. Indeed, and we have about a month until WrestleMania, and there's so much going on, but for anybody who has not yet subscribed, please smash that subscribe button, and to anybody who has already subscribed, we've had a surge of subscribers the last couple weeks, and like I said, quarter of a million views the last two weeks with all this wrestling content, because I told you on the last episode last weekend, WWE is on fire. We are back in here today, a week later. Um... To talk about Cody slapping The Rock, but to really get into, there were some more hints, right? There were a couple more hints that The Rock dropped on SmackDown. He had a new entrance. Uh, They gave us the acknowledge us instead of Roman going acknowledge me. But when they did do the acknowledge us, they had Roman and The Rock not put up any hand signal. Which I thought was very interesting. And so, there was some hints dropped. We'll we'll get into that. Uh, We'll also get into... What else are we getting into? Oh, The the Rock said a couple things about the world title that I thought were very interesting. Seth, we've been questioning what Seth Rollins' role in all this will be. We know The Rock, Roman Reigns... Cody Rhodes, we understand that whole whole situation. Seth Rollins is kind of sticking his nose in Cody Rhodes' business right now, and we've been wondering what the reason for that is Like when it comes to the storyline. But they did drop another hint for that, too, that we'll get into. Because even Drew McIntyre is a little bit involved in this as well. Maybe not directly in the ring with these guys like they were on SmackDown, accepting this tag team match on night one at WrestleMania, but Drew McIntyre has been saying to Seth Rollins, why are you in, why are you getting involved? Why are you involved in the bloodline story right now? And that's what we've been wondering, not just from the, you know, the kayfabe perspective, but from the pull back the curtain, real life storyline perspective, what are they doing with Seth Rollins? There were a couple hints, but, um, welcome back to the YouTube channel. What we do is we put out the long-form show, then we give you some clips, and uh, we will not have a show next week. It's St. Patrick's Day weekend. I, we're not doing a show. We're in South Boston. It's basically a a war zone. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's a holiday. So happy St. Patrick's Day to all those who celebrate. I assume everybody everybody celebrates St. Patrick's Day, right? Everyone's Irish. That's what they say, right? right? (laughs) I mean, I think so, at least. If they, I, You know what? I'm sure there's some group out there. It's an easy one to celebrate, though. I'm sure there's a gr- <laughs> group out there that would like to shut down traffic and protest St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> right? You know, there's, there's all those pots of gold at the end of the rainbow. They weren't dishing those out to enough people. <laughs> and they want to shut the highway down for St. Patty's Day. I'm sure there's some group out there that wants to do it. For everybody else who celebrates St. Patrick's Day, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. We, there will be no show next weekend. But uh, stay subscribed because the weekend after that, we do have a special guest coming on the show. A wrestling-related guest. We have been teasing this. Uh, He is going to come on. And um, we're going to certainly talk about everything going on with the road to WrestleMania. Uh, You did watch SmackDown. I did. You did? So we both watched it. I'm assuming everybody watching this watched it. I mentioned the Prime Hydration sponsorship, though. The largest sponsorship in WWE history. Does that make Logan Paul's WWE contract a time buy? Like, is he just (laughs) buying his own time? I mean, that's kind of what it feels like. And I hate saying it like that because I think Logan Paul has done a fucking yeah. fantastic job if he wasn't as good as he is i would i would 100 percent agree but he's so good he's so he good. is so good it's amazing he just gets it he just gets it. anybody who's hating on, I, I i understand that people like hating on things yeah it's like it's like recreational outrage type of thing yeah people just like it 
But if you're paying attention, that's a guy who loves wrestling and is putting the work and looks great every single time he's out there. I know it's not. I know he's not like they they call him like a part timer. I get it, but the guy is great. Every Logan, he's not a part timer anymore. I don't think so either. No, I think like he signed a new contract week, recently. Yeah. He's well, not. Let's see though. I think he'll disappear after a little story. You think run. he will? I mean, he's the, I don't know. he's a champion right now. He's the U.S. champion. I mean, yeah. we you go back to that Saudi show when we talked about. I disagreed with the way they had Logan Paul almost beat him. I don't have a problem with them doing the match as much as I as much as the the way they had that go. I thought that should have been a like a squash match. I thought Roman should have beat him in two seconds. But they had Logan Paul with these like superpowers. I thought that was a little corny. Not like a that? knock on Logan Paul, yeah. just like to, I just thought that was they a bad maybe look. Too much, yeah. A bad look for Roman Reigns, the guy that they had been building up for so long, and they have a guy who just comes into the business almost beat him. I I just thought that was a bad look. Um, and I don't know, maybe that was a, a Vince. Do you almost call. feel like the Saudi shows are like they're like half true? It's like it's like it's kind of the storyline, but it's also kind of just like a party over there. It's kind of like yeah, it's like <laughs> like there's so much money coming in that the WWE is just going to do with whatever they want. What yeah. Saudi Arabia wants them yeah, to do exactly, even yeah. from a storyline perspective. I don't know, maybe. So I think almost like we we pretend that's not canon in a way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, it's a good point, but maybe that speaks to why they did what they did with Logan Paul. Almost beating Roman Reigns in Saudi Arabia. Anyways, since then, Logan Paul has been... Even in that match, he was fantastic. I, yeah. I I'm, Let's not read too much into those comments. Um, but, you know, you have his prime hydration drink. They're going to put his logo in the center of the mat. <laughs> and it's just... it. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> right? I think the mat is sacred. I don't yeah. think you should put a logo on there. But it's like they. I I also thought like the Celtics uniform was sacred. I same, thought that same. the Boston Bruins uniform was sacred. Now they have advertisements all over the place. Yeah. So in this new world of advertisements, I can see them doing it. I also think part of it is the TKO slash UFC influence, where the the UFC ring is covered in advertisements. So you're gonna see more of that bleeding. If there's any money to ring out of it, they're gonna ring the money out of it. Yeah. That's what it feels like. I, it, it's just one of those things I tell myself, like, Danny, shut up. You're it's old. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm the old man yelling at the clouds right now, right? Yeah. This is just what's happening, man. Yeah. This is just what's happening. So, I, but, I, but I just, I don't know. Like, if the prime energy drink was in the, because it wasn't on the mat during this segment with The Rock, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, and Seth Rollins last night, yeah. right? It wasn't. No. They had it at the beginning, and then Randy Orton came in and gave a couple of RKO's, and that was funny. Um, but I just, I wonder what that's going to look like. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, WrestleMania. I don't know. I could be wrong. I Perhaps they're going to do it in a way where it blends in with the, the WrestleMania colors and the logo, and maybe it feels more big time because yeah. you mentioned UFC. We're used to seeing ads. Maybe this the sponsorship will make it feel like more of a special event. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know? I think there's a possibility of that. Get Bruce Buffer in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, they should do something that. Might like that might happen. Like that's that's not out of the realm. No, I, I think, <laughs> especially if they're going to do WrestleMania in in Vegas yeah. next year or the year after that, whenever they're going to do it. But um, anyways. Logan Paul, good for him. Anybody who's hating on Logan Paul is just, they're just out to hate. Yeah. And I don't get along with people like that. Same, so, same with me. Um, Both of the brothers. And he's in the news too. He's fighting Mike Tyson? Mike On Tyson. Netflix? On Netflix. How about Netflix? I'm going to have to get Netflix again. Netflix. Like a <laughs> WWE. They mentioned the Red Sox are going to do a, a special no. um, documentary series following them throughout the season. And uh, now they got Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. You're a big fight fan, more <laughs> yeah. so than me. Yeah, I'm pretty blown away by it. I mean, I'm more of a boxing guy than an MMA guy. I do watch a, a, a decent amount of the big boxing fights. I mean, we just saw Anthony Joshua knock yesterday out knock Ngannou. out <laughs> Francis Nagano with that just absolute bomb that he yeah. threw. And uh, Which I hope kind of curtails some of this UFC boxing crossover. I hope we just take a step back. I don't hate it, but it's uh, it's just two different sports. Like It's two different completely different skill sets so yeah but like mike tyson versus jake paul though 
Does, Does that just, move the needle? You, as a fight fan, you watch all these fights more than me. Does that move the needle for you? Okay, as a fight fan, no. But a, as someone who likes these freak show things, this is more of a freak show. He's a 50-something-year-old man. I understand, like, he's a killer. I think he's old. Is he 60? Uh, we went to look that he's up. Old. But he's old. Yeah, he, Put it this way. He, within that within that range. Jake Paul is a big boy. And, like, he he's in his prime not to and he knows how to box he 100 percent knows how to box like i wouldn't he's gotten the best guys to train him he's good he's not he's not this he's not a YouTuber world killer. that just gets into the ring um jake paul knows how to box i just that's why this one is almost fun though because i don't think i'm gonna i just don't think i'm gonna watch it i'm definitely gonna watch it i, I watch all of them pretty much so i'm i'm on it It'll be him fighting KSI next too, so like it, we'll get used to that. This is as good as it's gonna get. It's only down. who fighting KSI? Tyson? I think one of the Pauls. I'll say. All right, I think yeah, meant Tyson yeah. was gonna go on a run here and start fighting everybody. I, I love mean, that. <laughs> let's yeah, if that. he's out there knocking people out, like yeah, that would be <laughs> exciting. I mean, if I were Jake Paul, I would. Who did Tyson box last time though? That was like kind of just a um, Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, and they had the it's, this is and that what was this just is an be, exhibition. Right? This, is, this is what exactly. this is going to be. Yeah, an exhibition fight. I mean, I don't. I, the whole thing to me seems a little ridiculous because I don't think I don't think Jake Paul. But put, put it this way, and I respect Jake Paul just as much as I've expressed my yeah both of the, respect both, both for, for Logan Paul. Wire. You know, given yeah. what they've done. Um. I don't want to see Jake Paul knock Mike Tyson out. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, because in my head, I'm like, that might ruin something for me about <laughs> Mike Tyson, the boxer. Obviously, he's had his history of personal yeah. issues that turn a lot of people off on him. Anyways, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talking about the way I feel about when Tyson was in, and I know, like, he's he's older now, and it really doesn't count in the record books but it's just the visual of it it's yeah. not something i want to see i'm very curious to why he decided to do it it must be a a, a brink truck of money uh, i'll tell you why he decided <laughs> to do it you just mentioned yeah. it. they're backing up the brink truck yeah, it's gotta be to his house <laughs> beep beep you hear that i can hear the brink truck yeah. from here i don't even know where he lives yeah. you know another side of the country and i can hear that brink truck backing up into mike tyson's front yard so he did it for money they're doing this for money I just don't want to see Jake Paul knock Mike Tyson out. I also don't want to see Mike Tyson decapitate Jake Paul. I don't know. See, I think that's <laughs> that's best case scenario. <laughs> uh, like I, but the thing is, I just I I say that somewhat in jest, but I just don't think I'm going to watch. It doesn't move the needle for me. So yeah, if you're not into like all these freak show stuff, like I, I call it that, even slap fight. Like I, I think like it's like a it's almost like a circus it's not a real sporting event to me but it's it's very fun though yeah well what does move the needle for me is the main event at wrestlemania and on smackdown we last night i say last night we're recording this again on another saturday afternoon early evening and we've been putting these shows out on on sunday mornings this though this one might go up here late saturday night so whenever you're watching this Thank you for watching. Smash that subscribe button. But um, we get the Rock and Roman Reigns in the ring. And Roman Reigns comes down with his standard entrance. And then the Rock had a brand new entrance. I loved it. Right? Same entrance song. But they, they gave him that like superhero, evil superhero. Vi- I shouldn't say super, evil superhero. That doesn't make sense. Evil villain roll of the rock with the lights go out and they get the uh, you know the electricity going on the on the big screen it was a different entrance it gave it a little more buzz right i was hoping that they would come out together to roman reigns's music after last week when the rock acknowledged roman reigns and i put the quotations up with my fingers because we'll get into why again i think they doubled down last night that the Rock is acknowledging Roman Reigns, but not really the way people think he is. But I digress. They get in the ring last night. Roman Reigns says, acknowledge us. Still seemed a little perturbed that The Rock was sort of upstaging him with the, with the even more dramatic entrance than he usually has. Right? Like Roman Reigns, he keeps expressing this 
Like, all right, let's go. Like, it was almost Undertaker. Move it along. Right? It was. Yeah. <laughs> but they get in the ring, and Roman Reigns says, acknowledge us. The rest of the bloodline puts up the ones. The fans put up the ones. But the Rock and Roman Reigns do not put up the ones. And we broke down on the last show what the Rock was doing with the L. Right? And he pulled it back. And he, he did that two times in a row. They didn't even give the Rock and Roman Reigns the opportunity to do that, to show anything, because they didn't. They just kept their hands by them by their sides and let everybody else acknowledge them, which was an interesting twist. That was interesting twist number one. Um, the next interesting twist came, and we're gonna play the video for you right now in just a second. But. This was a major hint as to what's going on with The Rock. Another major hint. So far in the show, the last couple weeks, we've given you, to this point, two major hints with The Rock that we think he is going to help Cody Rhodes win the WWE Championship in the main event at WrestleMania on night two. The first hint that we gave you was... The first hint that we gave you was a couple weeks ago... On the Pat McAfee show, we played that clip from September when The Rock was on the Pat McAfee show on ESPN and he kind of broke down why he was coming back to do this Rock versus Roman Reigns. Uh, He broke down why they didn't do it last year. What would have happened in the WrestleMania, yeah. He just kind of explained like the reasoning behind him returning, what needed to be done, what needed to hit, to happen. It needed to be different, right? And in doing that, he base it, it feels like he gave away spoilers for this year's WrestleMania and maybe even more WrestleManias going forward. Exactly. And then last week, he did this again with the finger, with the L, pulls it back, and he's giving you the one, and we thought that's another sign. So The Rock, to this point, The Rock has given you Two major signs that we have pointed out on this show that he is going to help Cody Rhodes win the WWE Championship at WrestleMania on night two in the main event. Okay. He gets in the ring again with the third time. The third time with the bloodline. He gets in the ring. Last night on SmackDown. And he gives another major hint. Another major spoiler that he is going to help Cody Rhodes win the WWE Championship. Let's... Should we play the clip right now? Let's just play the clip. Here's The Rock giving us that other hint. Roman's grandfather looking down is proud. The Rock's grandfather, the high chief, is looking down. Stop it right there. right now. The Rock's grandfather, the high chief, (laughs) a different grandfather than Roman Reigns. So there have been people in the comments that have pointed out to me, look at the bloodline family tree from that press conference in Las Vegas. But... I didn't take that seriously, and I apologize to those people that have pointed it out. I should have looked at that. I didn't look at it. And maybe maybe that was just lazy journalism. I don't know, Paul. What do you think? <laughs> I think you might have even shown it to me, and I still didn't. I was like, oh, I, like, I don't like that. That's I get it. They put the bloodline family tree up there. It doesn't say anything. But when he pointed this out on SmackDown that his grandfather was the high chief, and it was clearly he pointed out that. It's not the same grandfather as Roman Reigns. There's a distinction. They're doing that on purpose. Again, this is one of those things that The Rock is doing to leave hints for everybody. Because last week when The Rock acknowledged Roman Reigns, when he said, I acknowledge you as my tribal chief, what did we say? We said, well, there's something that's going to happen here in the future in which The Rock is going to come out and go, yeah, I acknowledged you as my tribal chief because I'm higher than you. I'm the head chief, or as we see, the high chief. And then you sent me the picture of the bloodline family tree, and we looked at it, and we can pull it up right now, but the bloodline family tree, under the rock's name, or above above the rock's name, as you can see on the screen right now, it says high chief. So they not just pointed at this, they didn't just point this out on SmackDown, but they also pointed it out to you during the press conference a couple weeks ago in Las Vegas on this big screen with this bloodline. And maybe we can zoom in on that a little bit too. But you get, you see that. And it's kind of the, the, other, the, uh, the other side of the, of the bloodline family tree. And The Rock pointed out, Roman's grandfather would be proud. And my grandfather, the, the high, high chief. chief, right? Peter Maivia 
That's my grandfather. He's the high chief. And then when you look at the bloodline family tree, it says high chief. The rock is the high chief. That has been handed down to him, that title. And I think what we are going to find out, as he reiterated again, that the rock is actually calling the shots. And he's not just calling the shots as the high chief. He's calling the shots as, as he pointed out on SmackDown, the, what, a member of the board for TKO. And he looks at them, he says, I'm your boss and I'm your boss. So the rock is playing this role right now of everybody's boss, but also being Roman's boss as the high chief in the family. Yeah, he acknowledged him as the tribal chief, but what we're going to find out is that tribal chief is lower than the high chief. And the fact that The Rock would say this on SmackDown is another major hint that something is going on here. And we are going to get that clash between Roman and The Rock. They're on a collision course. But there's something else that happens here right after this that kind of pieces it together for me even more. Like, okay, we're going to get that clash. We're going to get The Rock saying, I'm the high chief. You're my tribal chief. You're lower than me. Roman's not going to like that. Paul Heyman, who's been looking at them all funny with crazy reactions, he knows what's going on because Paul Heyman's been linked to the bloodline for years, his entire career. By the way, congratulations to Paul Heyman going to the WWE Hall of Fame. But they're piecing this together this way too. Here's The Rock finishing with this comment that his grandfather was the high chief by saying something about Cody Rhodes' dad, Dusty Rhodes. Your dad, the American dream, one of the Rock's heroes is looking down. One of the Rock's heroes. You guys see what's going on right now, right? Like everybody sees what's happening. We can't be the only ones. How this is going to play out moving forward is that, because people have been wondering, well, what is the Rock really up to? And I think the fact that he got in the ring on SmackDown and went out of his way to call his grandfather the high chief and point out the fact that his grandfather is not the same grandfather as Roman Reigns' grandfather, right? To point out the different sides of the bloodline family tree, though they come together to still all be the same family. The Rock also points out that, well, Dusty Rhodes, Cody's father, you know, he's somebody that, he respects, like, this is a... great respect. Great respect for yeah. Dusty Rhodes. So what is going on? We're going to show you the slap right now. And then there's a reaction that The Rock has after the slap that is another hint as to what's happening. Here's Cody Rhodes slapping The Rock because The Rock says, you were a mistake. <laughs> Watch the reaction from The Rock here. He looks proud, doesn't he? Doesn't he look proud right there? There's a bit of a smile. There's a smirk. It's like a coy smile. Look, yeah. if he really wanted to beat down Cody Rhodes right here within the storyline, he would do it. And even after the show went off the air, we're going to show you how it went off the air, but even after it went off the air, there's people who have videos on social media. The Rock did not attack Cody. Cody didn't attack The Rock. They stood there face to face, and The Rock walked away. But you see the look on The Rock's face right now. He looks like he is proud of how Cody just stuck up for himself. He is proud of the way Cody Rhodes just handled himself one-on-one with the great one. Just minutes after, I know The Rock threw in, you were a mistake, but I think he's testing Cody Rhodes at this point. He points out that he has all this respect for Dusty Rhodes. He points out that he's the high chief, kind of subtly saying to Roman, you're my tribal chief, you're lower than me. Telling everybody in the ring, you all work for me. And then getting in Cody's face, taking the slap, and having this look on his face like he's proud of Cody Rhodes. What's going on right now, the major spoiler, what The Rock is doing, is he right now is doing all of this to make Dusty proud. And he is proud that Cody Rhodes is doing all the right things on this path to finish the story. That would make Dusty proud. This whole thing is going to turn out to be The Rock is purposely testing Cody Rhodes only to help him in the end to turn on the bloodline who he looks at and calls a bunch of losers in the ring. 
And that's how the story will be finished. And like The Rock said on the Pat McAfee show that we played a clip on this YouTube channel that has gone somewhat viral for us. He said he needed to come back and and do this story and lead into a one-on-one match with Roman Reigns. But it had to be different. It had to be special. It had to lead to a, a new era. Not an ending, but a beginning. It's the beginning of the Cody Rhodes title reign. It's the beginning of a new feud with the Rock and Roman Reigns. And it's not just as simple as the Rock returns and fights Roman Reigns for the head of the table. No, they're going to fight for the head of the table. But all this stuff happening beforehand where the Rock is constantly testing Cody Rhodes only to help him win the championship by making Dusty proud. That's what this is all going to be about. Think about Cody Rhodes finishing the story. What's the story? Really, the story is... His dad didn't have a great time here, so it's time to it's his time dad, to make our family winners. His dad didn't win this championship. His dad was in polka dots. His dad never won this title and should have. The Rock knows exactly. that. Cody knows that. And Cody is out to win that championship, not just for him, but for Dusty. And The Rock is out to motivate Cody. The smile for was a, Dusty. That smile was a smile of a father. A Let's see how father. this ends. Let's see the, the, the finish here of how this the show goes off the air. The smile. It's all right. And that's how it goes. It fades out. And it was perfect. You know, the, the, the WWE need the bloodline. All of these, everybody from Paul Heyman to the Usos to even Sami Zayn to Cody to The Rock to even Seth Rollins. And we're going to get into him in a second because... There was a moment with Seth and The Rock that might have been the best moment of the whole thing and kind of gets buried because he's not necessarily involved in the storyline night two. Or maybe he is. Maybe I'm, I'm jumping the gun here. Um, but they deserve an award for this. They really do. In all of them, all the people that you just said, like this is, this is epic. This is the Lord of the Rings. This is, this is six straight movies of, of content. It's amazing. And this is why, and we're not going to do it this show, and I'm sorry I teased it, my Mount Rushmore. I keep teasing it. I keep telling you. I'm going to give you my WWE Mount Rushmore this week, next week, the week after that. Uh, we're going to get to that. That will happen at some point here. But we, Paul, me and you before the show, we're kind of talking about who would you put on there, it's just hard. throwing names out. And I did tell you that I have a tough time not putting Roman Reigns on there on the Mount, my Mount Rushmore at WWE only because of how good this storyline has been with him as the top dog. I mean, you think of when he first came back with like, what was it? That triple threat with Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, and Braun Strowman? Is that what so. it was? I think it was, yeah. In the Thunderdome, Right. And he comes back. He's got the, the shiny teeth. You know, he was using those Crest 3D white strips. <laughs> Which, by the way, they do make your gums pretty sensitive. I've, I've used them recently. Um, yeah. But they work. <laughs> Shout out to Crest. I, w- I thought I was done giving away free reads. But then I give the fucking Crest 3D white strips. Shout out. Anyways. <laughs> the, the, the Roman Reigns came back. He looked, he looked great. And then he had Paul Heyman by his side. And when you go back to that moment when they're sitting backstage and they pan out and Paul Heyman is next to, the, to Roman Reigns. I apologize if I said The Rock earlier when Roman Reigns came back against The Fiend and Braun Strowman. But you, you go back to that moment when they first introduced Paul Heyman as being the wise man with Roman Reigns. And you start to wonder now. You, you look at the way Paul Heyman reacted because Paul Heyman had a look on his face when The Rock threw up the L last week. People were pointing that out in the comments too. And I noticed it afterwards, like when we were editing the video. I was like, oh, look at Paul Heyman's face. I wish we brought that up. But you look at Heyman's history with the bloodline. And you look at how Heyman even got involved with Roman Reigns in the first place. You got to wonder, like, how did that happen? Did somebody send? Is, is the storyline going to happen now where... There's even more going on. Like, there's like a whole nother layer that we're not even discussing. It's like the deep state of the family. (laughs) (laughs) Right? It's like, did The Rock send Paul Heyman to, like, help Roman Reigns... To guide him. ...keep the family at the top of the WWE, and then Roman Reigns got on this 
power trip where he was power hungry. Yeah. And The Rock is back, not only to like put Roman in his place, but he has so much respect for Dusty Rhodes. He sees how Cody Rhodes got screwed last year. The Rock is back. It's just all like maybe it all comes back full circle to that Paul Heyman moment. I never thought of it, but just calling him the wise man, the wise man basically puts him on that family tree. Like it's within the family language. He's the wise man. Like, it, yeah. So that, that does kind of speak to that someone from the family sent him. That's wild. Whatever they call him, to me, it doesn't matter. It's just the, the imagery of them panning out the camera, sitting next to Roman Reigns that first time. And now you look at all this stuff, the, the look on the face of Paul Heyman when he's looking at The Rock do that. He's like in shock. Like, what are you doing? We wondered what that means. I mean, it means either he's the leader of the bloodline or I'm in the ring with a bunch of losers, Right. What, whatever it means exactly, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's it's the symbolism that it's different than the ones yeah, a for dif- a reason. There's a differentiation. And they exactly. keep pointing it out for a reason. Even Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw yeah. did this, kind of mocking The Rock for getting it wrong. But we all know The Rock did that on purpose, and we pointed that out in the last show. And so w- everybody just wants to know what's the rock up to? What's he doing? Well, he gave the uh, the the new hint, calling himself the high chief. Excuse me, calling his grandfather the high chief, making you look at that family tree, which I did after the fact, and you see the rock is the high chief. And so this all basically comes back to the rock returning to put Roman in his place but also helping Cody Rhodes finish his story because of how much respect The Rock has for Dusty Rhodes. And you saw it in The Rock's face when Cody slapped him. There was a sense of of pride that The Rock had in Cody for the way he reacted to it all. Like he's testing him, getting him ready for this fight. And then you got Seth Rollins. Because there is an interesting thing that happens here. That The Rock actually says to Seth Rollins that I want to play. And I don't know, maybe people can put in the comments what they think this means. I, I'll get your take, Paul, what you think this means. But if we have that clip of The Rock, he, he, he says something to Seth Rollins, but mentions the championship. And it kind of comes out of nowhere. And I don't know if it was a mistake. I don't think it was. I think everything they're doing and saying right now is very well calculated. I don't think there are any mistakes, anything so that you either. hear. And with that said... Knowing that, here's what The Rock says about the Seth Rollins Championship, the World Heavyweight Championship that, Paul, me and you seem to be... Not so sold on. Not so sold yeah. on, as I, I, I think most... It's a lame duck title. It's, <laughs> it's just that we need to see him lose it. I think Drew McIntyre is going to win it at Mania, but... The Rock might have other plans. Here's what The Rock says about that title. The Rock will do everything in his power to make sure that you don't win and to make sure that title goes away. And to make sure that title goes goes away. away. So we kind of mentioned this briefly. I don't know if it was on the last show or the show before. Maybe it was two shows ago, three shows ago. We talked about Vince McMahon. They are wiping Vince McMahon out completely. In fact, one of the heads of TKO who owns WWE now, they had some type of press call, um, like conference call with the media this week. And they were asked about Vince McMahon and they said, Vince McMahon, yeah, you know, he sold some, all these stocks. He's done. Yeah. Fully done. He's not here. We don't even talk to Vince McMahon and he's not coming back. So they have washed their hands clean of Vince McMahon. And he's been blurred out in some of the videos in the new video game, even. So yeah, he was so, blurred out. So they're fully, liking which him. again is so crazy because it's we aren't even watching this, we aren't even doing this without Vince McMahon. Yeah, it, that, that's why I think the, that's why I said in the in the, the Vince McMahon podcast, let's make sure we get it right. TKO saying this. Again, I don't know that's that, that's them saying everything that girl Janelle Grant said is true. But we just don't even want to be involved with accusations like that. Yeah. So see you later. It's not like we all we needed to see was those texts yeah. that Vince was sending to know like you got to go, dude. 
this is a big, big company. That's just that's standard <clears throat> protocol right there. Yeah. And so my point being, with TKO getting on a conference call earlier this week saying not only is he gone and we don't talk to him about anything, but he ain't coming back. That world championship was a Vince McMahon creation because they broke it down in the WWE Network on that show, The Bump, and we played it for you on this show. That whole championship is the McMahon family crest. Yep. The whole title, the whole world title that Seth Rollins has is the McMahon family crest. And so when you hear The Rock go, we got to get rid of that title. Maybe can we hear it one more time? Do you have it queued up for us to play one more time, possibly? Here's The Rock mentioning this championship sort of out of nowhere. The Rock will do everything in his power to make sure that you don't win and to make sure that title goes that away. That title goes away. doesn't say and to make sure you lose that title. But he says to make sure that title goes away. It's very odd, unless you're the head of the board of the TKO. <laughs> right? It's very odd. So... I don't know if they're going to get rid of this title, but it would make sense based on everything they're doing with the McMahon family right now. Yeah. But also, Seth Rollins had a moment with The Rock where he gets in his face, and I thought stole the moment. Like, obviously, you get the Cody Rhodes slap. He's slapping The Rock and all the symbolism that we showed and all the hints that were dropped. And that's the real show because the real show is Roman versus Cody, right? Yeah. But when Seth Rollins got in The Rock's face and told him to shut up and was cutting that hardcore promo on The Rock and said, you know, you have missed a midlife crisis. And everyone was like, whoa. I'm watching that going, oh, shit. That's actually the match I want to see. Like, it's just so funny what a great promo can do for you and can do to the audience and can do to even someone like me watching, which is like, because The Rock right now is kind of exposing Roman Reigns a little bit, making him look like little brother. And it doesn't make Roman look great based on everything that's been happening. And then when Seth Rollins stepped into The Rock's face and cut that promo, it kind of made Cody look like Seth Rollins' little brother. You know, Seth's got the world championship. And you're like, this is a strange dynamic. And I'm not sure that's what they were going for with that. I'm not sure if Seth Rollins went into business for himself to like go above and beyond and go nah 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 nah. Like, cause look, if you're a pro wrestler and you're in the ring in this moment. And you're Seth Rollins. And you're kind of like yeah. the the odd man, because Seth Rollins in this story is kind of like forced into it just to create something. If you're a pro wrestler in Seth Rollins' shoes, don't you go into that going, I'm gonna steal the fucking show and not no one's gonna even know about it. And what are they going to do? Yell at me to tell me to stop being so good? No one's going to really do that. So you take advantage of the situation. I think that's what Seth Rollins is doing. And I think he, 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 he made me feel like when him and The Rock were face-to-face, that's kind of the match I want to see. And I know that Drew McIntyre is going to face Seth Rollins, but I just wonder when The Rock says, I'm going to do everything in my power to get rid of that title. I'm starting to wonder if, like, Seth Rollins keeps it and then he fights The Rock. Like, getting The Rock ready for to be, you know, match ready for Roman Reigns. Because you got to think. Doesn't the... Because when The Rock came back last time, he had a couple matches before he fought Cena the second time. Maybe the first time he... Did, did he get into the first fight with Cena? They, they fought two WrestleManias in a row. Yeah. Right? I think he did get... A little, and I think yeah. The Rock got hurt. Or maybe he got hurt the second time. Yeah, yeah. Either way, the second year that he came back, he had more matches leading in. He fought CM Punk. He was in a tag match, I think, with CM Punk. And then he fought CM Punk one-on-one. He's also kind he of won the title. He's also kind of told us on that McAfee clip that he's in this for it's a little different this time. Yeah. He's in this for a little bit more this time. That's what it felt like to me. Well, I just wonder if they have some type of moment where The Rock wins the world championship off Seth Rollins. Would you want to see it like a Saudi Arabia event? Maybe. I wouldn't mind seeing that. SummerSlam? Yeah, exactly. And then he retires that title. Or something, right? Yeah. Like, there's a reason why The Rock just said that about that title. I can't... I don't know what it is. I've been thinking, what could it be? Except Obviously, that. it's That's a, the only thing It's it the only be. thing it could be. Yeah. Is it, that it has the Vince McMahon crest all over it. They're eliminating Vince McMahon... 
And How it, can they do that? And it was so awkward the way he just spit it out there. It was almost like you have to get this information out there. Yeah, again, everything they, they're like saying at this point is well calculated, well thought out. In, and in the storyline. And there's a reason for it. But saying that about that world championship, I'm going to do everything in my power to get rid of that title. Not make you lose it, but yeah. get rid Not of it. Not take this from you. Yeah. Get rid of this title. Yeah. So you got to think that comment is going to lead to something. There's just so many different things happening right now. And I love it. Though. It's beautiful. This is the first time they, for in a long time that they feel like they're going, like it's full throttle ahead. It's, it's just. I love it. And I know this, and maybe this is a rant that I was going to save for, for a rainy day. This was a rant I was going to put in my rainy day fund on the Danny Picard show. <laughs> but you know what? Consider it fucking pouring outside because I have to say this now. There are people in the comments when we post all this wrestling stuff now that go, oh, two grown adults talking wrestling. <laughs> I don't understand that comment. I don't understand that mindset from somebody. I, I just don't get it because these are the same people that will probably sit down on a Sunday night when it was happening, getting all into a show like Game of Thrones on HBO, like getting psyched up for Game of Thrones, watching it religiously, maybe even watching episodes over and over again because some of the things that they say on that show, are like, I don't even know what's happening right now. Game of Thrones. The, like, think of how popular that show is. Think about how many people watch Game of Thrones that will say to someone like me and you afterwards, how could two grown adults watch professional wrestling and be that invested in professional wrestling? What do you mean? You're sitting there being obsessed with Jon Snow. Dragons. Fly, dragons flying around. These people, I'm convinced, actually believe that Jon Snow actually did fight Half living skeletons in a war to take over Westeros, which is a fake world. It's a f- they made up a fucking world. <laughs> Westeros is not a real place. Jon Snow was not a real person. The White Walkers don't exist. And yet the people that watch that show religiously will come to us and go, how could you, how could you watch pro wrestling? The people that think a fake land like Westeros is a life-changing event on their own television are coming to us telling us we need to take it easy as grown adults paying attention to something that's scripted. It's like, well, you know what? There's actually a difference. If you showed me a clip of Jon Snow actually taking the sword to the arm and getting the real life cut to his arm, then maybe you got a little beef. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? Yeah, this is scripted, but when guys get put through a table, they don't have a stunt double getting put through the table. When a guy gets hit with a chair, there's no stunt double getting hit with the chair. And by the way, when you get slammed on that mat, it hurts. (laughs) And Westeros is not a real place. It's mostly green screen. (laughs) So what are we doing with that argument that people who are adults cannot enjoy the WWE? I don't understand. How many subscribers do they have in their YouTube channel, WWE? They just broke a record. How many? It was a million. Billion? I don't don't even know. They just broke some type of record. I saw Triple H like showing the the trophy. But you mean to tell me that you're going to slip in the comments here and go, two grown men. Watching professional wrestling, clowns, embarrassing, and you're going to sit there on a Sunday night and you're going to eat your popcorn and be on the edge of your seat for a guy that speaks a fake language in a fake fucking made up world fighting fake made up people (laughs) is like, is the definition of insanity to then turn to us and go, how could you guys watch that? How could you guys take that so seriously? This is entertainment. This, this, this is like, we do a lot of sports talk on this show. But the last couple of weeks, I have, I can't remember a time where I've had more fun recording this show and putting this show together, talking about and breaking down what's going on with this Roman Reigns, The Rock, and Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins storyline. I, like, I just can't recall a time where I had this much fun doing it. And this is an escape 
Okay? This is our escape. Let us enjoy this escape while you enjoy your escape in the world of Westeros. <laughs> Made up Westeros. Or King's Landing. Whatever the fuck's going on there. Um, because, and this, those same people too are probably the same people that are so wrapped up in like politics too. Right? Like they, they, they can't escape the political world and all the extremes on each side. Like, give me a break. We're enjoying something right now. Let us enjoy it. Um, it's just I had to get it off my chest. I saw, way, I saw way too many of those comments where I'm like, well, what do these people do? Like, what do they watch for entertainment? Yeah, it's like watching like Lauren Otter. Lauren Otter and you're like, yeah. this, I don't think this is a real court case. I don't think this is real right here. It's, <laughs> it's all fake. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. Um, into comedy. But I said my piece. I, I, I was going to save that. You know, did I get the point across? I think, I think it's why I agree with you completely. Game of Thrones is, is a great show. Yeah. I watched it. Yeah. It's a good show. Yeah. But like when just, John, just when, when you see Jon Snow, like fall off the horse, like, I don't even know that he's even fall, the one falling off the horse. Yeah. I think they probably have a, a stunt double. All right. Like. When Roman Reigns power bombs somebody through a an ounce table, there's no stunt double there. Oh yeah, yeah. Spend an evening with Mick Foley and tell me <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> we do this whole thing. Is it fake? Is it real? Is it fake? Is it real? Like wh- whatever you want to call it, I don't care what yeah. you call it. I call it entertainment. Yeah. I call it entertainment. Now, am I sitting here promoting like jumping off the top of a ladder <laughs> through a pane of glass? Like Darby Allen did on their Revolution pay per view? No. But that that guy's fucking out of his mind. I'll watch it, but it's crazy. <laughs> that dude's crazy. Yeah. I think he just said, he had like some quote recently, which was like, he's climbing Mount Everest and like he doesn't know if he's going to make it. So if, like he thanked everybody. It was like his, his <laughs> goodbye. So he's, a, he's that type. I, I don't know. Like, he's yeah. that dude's. <laughs> That's special. Couple fries short of a happy <laughs> meal. Um, but good on him because he he is entertaining. I just that whole spot with the glass, like they didn't think of the fans. Yeah, that would have been my first thing. Like, dude, what happens when that glass breaks and like someone explodes. gets hit in the eye with a fucking little piece of glass? They're gonna you're gonna have twenty people suing you. Like you're just asking yourself for multiple lawsuits with that. Like, no, you're not doing that. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. Um. It always lead, we all I know it always sounds like we're leading into like crushing AEW, which we do crush AEW, but it's not on purpose. It just happens. Um, I told you I love what the Young Bucks are doing. Yeah, and they're leaning into that EVP. You know what I wish? There's a lot I like. Yeah. You know what I wish Tony Khan would do? What? He's not going to do it because I just I don't know that he I don't know that he can to be honest. But I think this is what he should do. He should try. He, people like he comes off as like this goofy dude playing with dad's money. Yeah, he should be that guy on TV. Yeah, yeah. lean into it a hundred percent. Like the Bucks are leaning into the EVP roles. Tony Khan. Yeah, show show and, up. Yep. Right. Yep. Especially everything. with the Vince McMahon stuff. Have him on yachts. Have do everything. Just make him. So you get the Vince McMahon stuff, and now he's being erased from WWE. You can then be like, actually, you, like, without even mentioning it, like, hey, look, the head of a company is involved in a storyline now, and like, you know, he's not doing all that stuff. He's not problematic, yeah. Yeah, but he is the goofy, yeah. playing with dad's money. And and that's what he is, and I actually, like, I've recently come to kind of respect that of him, because he, he's going to have that money regardless, right? And I, But he's I, doing something he loves. He's really doing something It's not something to say he's loves. not working hard and hasn't earned some money, but the, the, no, the, no, no, the, no, no, the no. facts of are the course. facts here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think people know so much about who he is and his so family. Use it, use it. And like he's getting crushed on the internet and that company's getting crushed on the internet. Lean into that shit. Yeah. You know, give us the... Tony Khan. Make him a, like, a character, a real character. Like, interrupt the Young Bucks and then just be goofy and, and act like, like you don't know what's going on. And maybe you get put through a table or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that would... I'd be watching that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
But anyways, I digress. I, I think right now it is as exciting a time for a wrestling fan as it could be. We're a month away from WrestleMania. And uh, <clears throat> I'm having as much fun as I've ever had recording the show. And I'm glad that we're seeing results on the YouTube channel. Which, you know, we just started to really... I mean, I've been leaning into the YouTube channel stuff for a while. Just not... I haven't been like... Only, I've been focusing on the podcast, like the audio portion of it, right? And not necessarily the video portion. Even though I would throw clips on YouTube all the time. I just... It wasn't my priority. Now, it's become sort of the priority. And it's paying dividends. And I think that's because... We're talking about something that we enjoy talking about. I don't care if people in the comments don't enjoy us talking about it, but we are enjoying it. And there's obviously a lot of people who are now following us, continue to subscribe and watch and listen who enjoy it. And we're breaking it down better than anyone else, in my opinion, because we're treating this thing like we're treating the WWE like I think AEW set out to treat AEW. We're like they want it covered like ESPN would cover the Patriots. We're covering the WWE like Stephen A. Smith covers the NFL and the NBA. That's how we're covering this right now. And you could say, well, it's scripted and you could even be that guy that says it's not real, but the bottom line is... It's real to me, damn it. It's entertainment. It's a storyline that continues to unfold and keep you on the edge of your seat. And if you grew up with it, there's like a... a a whole nother nostalgia effect at play right now with The Rock. Yeah. Is there not? And that's another reason why this is such an entertaining time in the WWE. Because The Rock is just crushing it right now. And it does seem like with all these little storylines that we're noticing and hints that we're noticing, he's not going away anytime soon. And we knew he was coming back to eventually do a program with Roman Reigns. Which is going to be huge. And we're in the middle of it right but now. But I think we both agreed, and maybe I think we've kind of talked to some people on the internet to agree with us, that it needed a little more juice. And they're giving us the juice. And then some. And all these different angles and storylines. And, and I've enjoyed breaking it all down. I mean, we're, after WrestleMania, I cannot promise you that we're going to sit here and, and do wrestling every week. Or every other week, whenever we record, I mean, we are going to be bringing some more guests in because there is some big stuff happening with the show. I can't really get into, but what I can promise you is that there will be some more guests on the show in studio. And so not even necessarily in this studio. Another hint. Maybe I gave you too much information. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot going on. So anybody who has subscribed, thank you. If you haven't already smashed that subscribe button. Um, but yeah, I think we covered it all from SmackDown, right? I think we covered all the angles at play here. Yeah. We're going to have the, the bloodline. I think we're going to get the bloodline rules. How can you not? On night two. We yeah. talked about that last show. I, I think it's pretty obvious that somehow the Rock and Roman Reigns are going to win this tag team match on night one. And we're going to get bloodline rules night two. Probably should have mentioned that earlier on the show, but we, we had to mention the high chief stuff. Um, but that's where it leads into the Rock helping Roman, uh, excuse me, helping Cody Rhodes win the title. So, um, yeah, that's that. What else do we got? We got, and I know I, that that's the thing right now. We're trying to like, I feel like with the wrestling, the surge and the wrestling wrestling audience that we've gained. Now it's like, hey, can we jump to the Patriots <laughs> dynasty on Apple TV? Yeah, right, how do we? How do we put those two things together? Um, maybe we'll save it. Yeah, I, think I mean, I have you been watching the Dynasty? Yeah, I'm almost through it. I'm almost, I'm almost caught up. What are your it. initial thoughts on it? Uh, okay, episode one, I loved it. I really loved it. And then, to me, it felt like they rushed the second and third championship. It was, it was. It's literally five minutes. The way I remember, it, it's five minutes at the end of an episode. And then it goes heavy into Deflate Gate, uh, just all that stuff. S stealing, uh, filming. To me, it feels like I wonder who made this. Like I really have a question of like who who is this coming from and who is this even for? Because I don't think it's for Patriots fans. I don't think it's for Patriots fans at all. I think it's for everyone else. 
And it's it's just, I, I'm struggling to understand the point of this whole thing. So I am not watching it, but I am seeing what people are saying. You know, I have people texting me like, are you watching it? This happened. You're telling me what happened. I'm seeing clips from like Scott Pioli, which he throws out a quote. He throws out a quote that to me is like the best line I've ever heard in my life when he's talking about Tom Brady. Now, Scott Pioli is, he used to work for the Patriots. He was a former uh, director of player personnel. But in 2016, he was the assistant GM for the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl when the Falcons were beating the Patriots 28-3. to Patriots come back and win that Super Bowl, trailing 28-3, come back and win. And Scott Pioli, just last night on, on Friday night, he this we'll play the whole clip. I mean, it's it's a minute long, but Scott Pioli, he's talking about being down on the sideline and his organization celebrating a Super Bowl championship while being up twenty eight three, and having worked for the Patriots in the past, he knows Tom Brady very well. I think he worked for the Patriots like two thousand to two thousand eight, maybe Brady's first seven eight years. And he knows Brady at that point as good as anyone does. And he's seen, and now he's a member of the Falcons organization in 2016. And in this is a clip from the dynasty. And he's explaining what he was telling to people in his organization who were already prematurely celebrating a Super Bowl championship win over the Patriots. And he compared Tom Brady to Freddy Krueger. And it's the, it maybe is the greatest line I've ever heard. Let's, let's, let's play it. And I said, you effing people don't get it. That guy number 12 across the field is Freddy effing Krueger. He's coming back and he's going to get a bunch of us. I just hope he doesn't get us all. (laughs) Unbelievable. I just hope he doesn't get us all. (laughs) Now. I love that. Do we think he really said that? Uh, I mean, time time changes some things, but he thought something similar to that. I think maybe, like, if he phrased it that perfect in that moment, (laughs) then it is perfect. I wonder if it was delivered then the way he delivers it now for the cameras, for the dynasty on Apple TV. But But regardless, even if he's just delivering it like that right now, for the cameras, it's a perfect delivery. It's the most perfect, greatest line That's I've ever heard to yeah. describe someone. It's true, yeah. right? He like he's come. He's gonna get us. He's gonna get. He's coming to for you. us. Yeah. He's gonna get get us. I just hope he doesn't get us all. <laughs> Amazing. And see that that's kind of what I have the problem I have with the Dynasty documentary. I kind of wanted that. I kind of wanted. It's the dynasty. Just let the Patriots beat their chest a little bit. And to me, it feels like they're still slightly punishing the Patriots. Like, it still feels like we're still doing that. So, there's another... Before we get into... Because, again, I haven't watched it, so I don't want to be sitting here crushing something I haven't watched. I think that's unfair to the Apple production team. Yeah. I think that's... that's And it could easily be just how I'm seeing it, to honestly. Everybody has their own take. I mean, I'm sure me and you have watched things in the past where we feel differently about something. I don't know. Maybe I feel differently. But I do feel like having heard... I've heard from a lot of people. I've seen a lot of clips. And I think you'll agree with this. That from at least somebody who has not watched this Dynasty... How many, how many episodes is it? Eight? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, Eight to ten? Or yeah. how, whatever I, I it think is. we're up to eight. I'm not sure if there's right. actually more. I haven't, there's I haven't more than a handful it. of episodes here. Yeah. Looking at the Patriots dynasty with Belichick, Brady, and the 20-year dynasty that they had. Um, From someone who hasn't watched the whole thing and has only saw clips and talked to people about it, it feels like, and you tell me whether or not you agree with this, it feels like this is a Robert Kraft production and it's a hit piece on Bill Belichick. Is it? I don't know. Like maybe that's too far, but it does feel like something else is going on. It feels it, it, part of it felt like Goodell was still striking back. So I'm like, how much did he have involved in this? But it does feel Kraft is kind of aggrandized over and over and over, and to a point where I think I, I said it to you before we went on, but I'm kind of not liking Kraft as much as I did going into this. But it does feel like it possibly could be right from his mouthpiece. So. 
Yeah, I mean that's the well, vibe a part that I'm... where they say something like not. I know you haven't seen it, but they say like they lay out all the great things. This is early on. This might be the second episode. They lay out all the great things Bill Belichick have done, and then they kind of just dismiss it and say he was mean. They're, like he, they don't actually say it. But they're like, well, then this and this and this. And there's just like there's always a there's always a bit of doubt over Bill Belichick at every part that I've seen. Well, I saw a quote about the Malcolm Butler stuff. And it was from Robert Kraft. And it was essentially just throwing Bill Belichick under the bus. Being like, well, I think, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, I was led to believe that Malcolm Butler didn't play in that Super Bowl because there was a personal situation between Bill and Malcolm. And the way I always understood it with Bill was that he put personal stuff aside and did what's best. For, for the team and best for business. And in that moment, in that game, the biggest game of the year, he decided to go into business for himself, which was unusual for Bill Belichick. I'm paraphrasing. But threw Belichick under the bus in this documentary where it's like, I don't know. Like, did you have to go, did you have to go on that rant for that? I mean, we all know it didn't happen and Bill Belichick's going to take criticism. But at the same time, if you don't, if you're admitting that you don't know what happened, why are you saying? Why this? are you throwing him under the bus? Unless people, that's such a weird situation. I don't know. There's always these rumors. You don't know what to believe. I always lean back on this: is that I think when we get worked up about that moment, we forget what. And and I know it sounds like I'm knocking Malcolm Butler. But Malcolm Butler had the interception against the Seahawks. And I wish I had the clip we could play it. It's from NFL Films. It's where Bill Belichick is breaking down the Malcolm Butler interception to win that Super Bowl against the Seahawks, where they practiced that in practice. And in practice, Malcolm Butler got toasted on the, on the pick route inside. And what he did was he tried to go the long way to try to get to the player that was cutting into the middle. And so in practice, he got it wrong. And Belichick goes in on this NFL Films piece and is talking about that. And then they ran that goal line. They knew that was ha- they knew this was the play. They practiced it leading into the Super Bowl. They knew this was going to happen. It happened. And Belichick, you know, they had the whole Malcolm go. Butler gets out there. But Malcolm Butler gets it right in the Super Bowl and has arguably the greatest play in the history of the NFL. I will always say that it's, and I don't even know if it's arguable because in that moment when Malcolm Butler intercepted that football against Seattle, if he just makes a great play and breaks it up and bats it down, Seattle probably still scores and win the Super Bowl in the next play. Like, because then they probably, you know what I mean? Yeah. You needed to the Shit, rip Take the Lombardi trophy out of Russell Wilson's cold, dead hands. <laughs> That's what you needed to do. And he did it. But he only did it because in practice he got it wrong. And this was like a Bill, this was like a whole Bill Belichick creation, this play. And Malcolm Butler, the guy who went in and executed this Bill Belichick play. Malcolm Butler was a guy that Bill Belichick literally picked up off the street. Undrafted. Rookie free agent. Bagging groceries. Bill Belichick's like, eh, let's trust him in the biggest moment of, of, of the biggest game of our lives. And was right. And was right. And so I, when we talk about, oh, why didn't Malcolm play in the next Super Bowl? It's like, yeah, I get mad too. But at the same time, Malcolm Butler is like the ultimate Bill Belichick creation. Everything about him was created by Belichick almost in a lab. Like Belichick almost created him in a lab and was like, win me a Super Bowl in the most dramatic way possible. And so like I think of that and I go, I just, I have a hard time going in on Belichick for the next one. I trust Belichick to have been right. Something happened. That was that he couldn't it wasn't just get over, thing. and it wasn't yeah. just a personal yeah, thing. 
They had to have been. So for Kraft to not even know, say he doesn't even know what happened, and to throw him under the bus like that, I start seeing clips like that, and I go, oh, the dynasty is Robert Kraft kind of producing this and and shitting on Belichick, and Kraft wanted to be the guy. Oh, the dynasty is all because of him. Because I see this kid. Can we pull up um, that that video of the executive producer or whoever it was? Yeah, that's, yeah right there. Um is it that one? I believe... It, no, it's not that one. It's the next one. This one right here. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's this. We'll, we'll, we'll play it. Yeah, this... So, hold on. Un, un, unzoom it. I want to see what, what his title is. I don't know if they put it... No, they don't in the description. I don't know if he's like the executive producer. He is... This, is, this guy put together the dynasty, and he goes on this show with, with Michelle Beadle on Sirius XM and he gets into why like his mindset creating this Patriots Dynasty series on Apple TV and I'm watching this going wait a minute you mean to tell me that you know what let's let me react to the actual clip refresh my memory here's what the kid the executive I, I believe he's the executive producer I could have the title wrong but either way he's this is the guy that created the dynasty I remember one of the first people I talked to was this guy named Ernie Adams. He was the director of football research for the Patriots. And he had a great line. He said, you know, every year everybody comes into the, their meeting rooms, every state, every, all 32 teams, and the coach gets up there and says, this year we're going to win the Super Bowl. And his exact line is, not everybody is willing to do what it takes to get there. And so I remember that was one of the first things I heard. And when I heard that line, I thought, okay, I think that's the question that we're going to be trying to answer here is, what does it take to get there? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Shut so, it off. Shut it off. He's acting like he's the first person to discover that the Patriots were hungry to get to the Super Bowl and ended up getting there with that hunger. And then a di- like, he's acting like he's the he's letting us know that a dynasty existed. He discovered that the Patriots were a dynasty and we're all going, oh, they were? <laughs> like, we don't know who Ernie Adams is. Does this kid, like, did he... Just show up on planet Earth like three weeks ago and decide like, oh, I'm gonna, this. And by the way, this is the backstory I'm going to give as to why what we prefaced the whole thing around. And Ernie Adams quote about getting to the Super Bowl. What? So I see a quote like this and a video like this. And I think to myself, Robert Kraft is like, Who is this, this is too simplified. Like Robert Kraft is pulling, pulled the strings on this whole thing. This is a Robert Kraft production. I feel bad for this guy. Because I think he was like fed. Like, hey, here's what you say. (laughs) Ernie Adams. You know, Patriots Dynasty. Not like, oh, I talked to Bill Belichick and he told me to go fuck myself. And I thought right then and there, like, I might have something. No, we talked to Ernie Adams talking about how hungry they were to get to the Super Bowl. It's just kind of a ridiculous video that I saw. It's awkward, yeah. Right? It's like, this is your, you're giving us your reasoning to why you did this? Yeah, we know. We know who Ernie Adams is, and we know that the Patriots had a dynasty. That's, That's w- your reasoning for this? I just thought there needed to be something else there. And by talking to other people, the only other thing there is they missed a lot of stuff, and it feels like Robert Kraft put this thing together as some sort of Bill Belichick hit piece. And you see something like this and go, uh. to me, from again, not to be too unfair to them, because I haven't watched the whole thing, but it does feel like that from the outside looking in. I just, didn't we already do this? Didn't like the Tom vs. Time thing happen? Wasn't that like a 10 episode series? Like we are, like, I just have no interest in this right now. now I don't know if it's because it's too soon. I don't know if it's because I'm still out there saying Tom Brady should return to the Patriots. By the way, he ran a better 40 time recently than he did as a rookie. Than he did as a rookie. <laughs> and that video, remember we were wondering, was he throwing the football, working out? He is throwing the football. There was video of him. So he is working out, throwing the football. I'm still trying to get him to return. I know it's a pipe dream. It's not going to happen. And maybe it's too soon, but like, I don't know, man. Like, the Patriots are kind of dead to me right now. <laughs> like, they've been dead to me the last couple of years. And you got the Ian Rappaport tweet the other day, which is like, oh, the Patriots, they are listening to calls from Mac Jones. It's like, yeah, no shit. 
But the fact that you would even tweet that tells me they want the Patriots want more teams to know because they're having a tough time because nobody wants Mac Jones because they all know what he is, which is what we've been saying on this show for two years. So that tweet from Ian Rappaport just tells me Patriots are having a tough time moving him. So the Patriots have been dead to me. They're a little alive to me because maybe now they get the franchise player at number three overall. I think it's probably going to be Jaden Daniels. I would take Daniels over Drake May anyways, but that's just me. I mean, I think Washington's going to take Drake May, so Daniels is going to fall to you anyways. If you told me you were going to get the veteran quarterback, I would say take Marvin Harrison Jr. And then take a quarterback in the second round. But it doesn't look like they're going to do that. And because they're not going to do that, then the obvious pick is a quarterback. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. I, I, I just have no real interest to sit down and... Like, I see even the local Boston sports radio and TV looking at this dynasty piece and, like, rehashing the whole thing. I don't know. We already know. <laughs> and, we, and we already know that the same media talking about this now didn't let us fucking enjoy it while it was happening, and now they won't even let us enjoy it looking back on it. And that's what it feels like to me. That's exactly what it feels like to me. Right? This wasn't made for Patriots fans. Maybe it shouldn't have been. Maybe it is like a history of the NFL type of thing, but to me, it's, it should be about the dynasty, not about the evil empire. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to sit down and watch the whole thing. I just don't. Um, and I do enjoy like long form documentaries like that. Like the Michael Jordan one. The Last, the Dance. Last Dance. I mean, that's one of the best. I, I mean, that, you, when you watch it, you're like, oh, I know who, I know who made this. <laughs> Michael, Michael was in the editing. <laughs> Mike made that. MJ made I that. I still loved it. I'm not saying that. That's but, great. But the, when you watch all these, you have to question, where is this actually coming from? But I guess my point is I enjoy watching those. I, that also happened during COVID, too. They kind of... I remember they, they sped up the release of that. Okay. Because of the COVID shutdowns. Yeah. They were like, oh, we got everybody at home. We get everybody Smart. locked up. Yeah. All right, we're not going to talk about that anymore. We're monetized <laughs> on YouTube. We want to stay monetized, huh? You always make fun of people doing stuff for money. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm bad. We're even making like 25 bucks right now. I'm doing whatever YouTube tells me. I'm easy. I'm easy. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say there, but it's 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 true. We're going to not touch upon that. But The Last Dance, it's great to watch. Yeah. I, I usually love watching the multi-episode, long-form series of behind-the-scenes sports stuff. But this Patriots team, I've just, I lived it. We saw it. We know it all. You really lived it. You covered it. So you really saw I mean, it. I was in the, lo- yeah. I was in the <laughs> locker room legitimate. as a reporter. I was on the radio. I was doing TV. And throughout it all, I was still a fan. Like, I, when I was a reporter, the reason why I was a bad reporter on the scene when I was doing that stuff is I couldn't shake my fandom. Yeah. Like, so when I would be in the locker room, like with Tom Brady... Oh, Randy Moss. Pretty tough. Uh, it was tough. It was like, I, I can't, you know, I'm biased and that's not going to, that's not going to stop. Um, like just, you know, being in the Red Sox clubhouse every day, like I walked up the tunnel with David Ortiz onto the field. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I went from like every day in the clubhouse before the game. Down the tunnel, past the batting cage, up the steps, onto the field, sat in the dugout, just chilling. Like, are you kidding me? This is my life? You want me to not be biased right now? Like, not I love this shit. Great. <laughs> like, I'm a fan. I can't shake that. You have me doing this stuff? So, like, I was a bad reporter because of that. I was better with the opinionated stuff on radio and TV, which is why we ended up, you know, going the route that we did. But, um... You're right. I did. I lived it in both ways with the Patriots. And like, I just, I have little to no interest in like going back to watch stuff about that team and that organization and that dynasty. That's the least bit negative. And it feels like from what people say, a lot of it is the negative stuff. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's why when I see that Freddy Krueger quote, though, I'm like loving it. That Scott Pioli line? Woo! Scott, I hope you said that on the sideline, dude, because that is a magical quote. I put it on my Instagram story, too. I put, uh, maybe I will toss it up on the screen. Brady's face on Freddy Krueger. <laughs> That's a quick edit I did on my phone. It's not great, but it's funny. Um, what else? I think that's it. I think we can wrap it up, right? We won't be here next weekend. St. Patrick's Day weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll be back the weekend after that. There will be some clips. So hit subscribe, like those clips, comment on them, share them with your friends and your family. And, uh, you got any final words for the show, for the people? You good? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody. Be back in a couple weeks. Special guest in studio, wrestling related. Talk to you then.